Good morning everyone. In this video, we are going to cover the current affairs. For mobile optimized ebooks, please install GK Today Academy app. You can attempt the quiz in this app and you can read detailed explanation. For regular updates, please join our telegram channel. The link is given in the description box. We have started a new channel Civils Academy. You can subscribe to it if you find it relevant. For hard copy books, you can visit our website gktbooks.com. Now let's start. Receivables Exchange of India, that is RXIL, which was in news recently, is associated with which sector? So it is associated with MSME. It is a TREDS platform. What is TREDS? It is Trade Receivables Discounting System and it is accredited by RBI. Recently, RXIL was in news because it announced that it has discounted receivables of rupee 1000 crores in a month. So first thing first, this platform is for MSME. Second thing is, what is this trade receivables? So suppose you are a company, you have provided goods or services to some customer, but you have not received the payment so far. So that is a trade receivable. It is the total amount that a company has billed to the customer for the goods and services they have delivered, but haven't received the payment so far. This is trade receivable. So this RXIL was set up in 2016 and it is a joint venture of SIDB and NSE. What is SIDB? It is Small Industries Development Bank of India. What is NSE? It is National Stock Exchange. So the objective of RXIL is to provide a platform to MSME that is micro, small and medium enterprises so that they can auction their trade receivables. So this has addressed or this has helped to address the issue of delayed payments for MSME. Present MSME Minister is Nitin Gadkari. Now recently, RBI was also in news because of few news events. First, RBI was in news as it announced that it is going to release Financial Inclusion Index and this will be released annually and this will be released in July. RBI was also in news as recently it increased WMA that is Ways and Means Advance limit for the states and for UTs that is Union Territories. What is WMA? It is Ways and Means Advances and this has been done that means this limit has been increased or enhanced on the recommendations of a committee and that committee was headed by Sudhir Srivastava. So this WMA are the temporary advance given by RBI to the states for any mismatch in the payments and receipts. So this is a temporary arrangement. If there is a mismatch in the payment, so RBI will provide this much money. So previous limit was 32,000 to 25 crores. Now it has been increased to 47,010 crores. So this is approximately an increment of 46 percentage. Please note that for the temporary time period, RBI has increased this limit. Apart from that, RBI was also in news because it increased the maximum balance limit for payment banks. Previously, the maximum balance limit in payment bank was 1 lakh rupees. Now it, it has been increased to 2 lakhs. Now please answer in comment box which committee recommended payment banks and small finance banks and which was the first payment bank in our country. Apart from that, RBI was also in news because of its latest monetary policy committee report. So the latest rates are repo rate is 4 percent reverse repo is 3.35 percent MSF that is marginal standing facility is at 4.25 percent bank rate is 4.25 percent CRR is 3.50 percent CRR is cash to reserve ratio RBI was also in news because recently former deputy governor of RBI BP RBI was also in news as recently Deputy Governor of RBI BP Kanun Go retired. One more thing, this MPC that is Monetary Policy Committee is a six member committee. Right now the Monetary Policy Department is headed by Dr. MD Patra. Next question is who has been appointed as a new Department of Economic Affairs Secretary succeeding Tarun Bajaj. So Ajay Singh has been appointed as a new Secretary of Department of Economic Affairs. Tarun Bajaj who was the present DEA Secretary has now been appointed as the Revenue Secretary. In addition to that, few other personalities were in use. Recently, Virat Kohli was appointed as the Brand Ambassador of Vivo Smartphone. 
apart from him recently justice nv ramanna was appointed as the 48th cji that is chief justice of india in addition to him recently carl bilt was appointed as the who that is world health organization special envoy for act accelerator what is act act is access to covid 19 tools in addition to him recently chintan vaishnav has been appointed as the md of atal innovation mission atal innovation mission is part of niti ayog niti ayog is an executive body it is successor of planning commission prime minister is the ex officio chairperson of niti ayog in addition to him recently s raman has been appointed as the new cmd of sidbi what is sidbi it is small industries development bank of india the headquarters of sidbi is in lucknow and it is in uttar pradesh next question is benjamin netanyahu is set to form a new government in which country so this country is israel recently elections held in israel and now israeli president has invited benjamin netanyahu to form the new government please note that he is the longest serving leader of israel next question is geno bots which were seen in news recently are robots developed from the stem cell of which organism so recently researchers at Tuftas University have developed robots named Genobots and these are developed from the stem cells of frogs so what is so special about these robots actually these are able to self heal after damage that means they will be able to recover automatically after damage so this is tremendous development and that is why it is significant so these robots can work in teams and they can record information about their surrounding and they have the capability to self heal so obviously they have the utility in biomedical sector and in environmental studies name is genobots and these are developed from the stem cell of frogs next question is which country has approved calberry the first new drug for children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder so recently fda that is food and drug administration of usa have approved this first new drug for the kids with ADHD that is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder so this disease is said to be the reason behind inattention hyperactivity and impulsivity recently USA or to be specific FDA of USA approved this first new drug next question is which regulator has asked indian companies to separate the roles of chairperson and managing director so this has been done by market regulator sebi what is sebi it is securities and exchange board of india so recently it was in news actually the previous deadline for this separation was 1st of april 2020 and based on the representation from different stakeholders sebi revised this deadline now it is 1st of april 2022 that means by that time the top 500 listed companies should have separate j person and md why this is being done see if the company will have j person come md that means same person will be j person and md then it is concentration of power so to improve corporate governance sebi mandated this now please note that this is a recommendation suggested by kotec committee on corporate governance so the first kotec committee on corporate governance so now the new deadline is 1st of april 2022 top 500 listed companies need to follow this next question is which group of companies has become third in india to cross 100 billion us dollars market capitalization so this company is adani group it is headed by mr gautam adani it has become third in our country to cross the market capitalization of 100 crores which are first two entities one is tata group and another is reliance group now recently this adani group was also in news as apsez that is adani ports acquired remaining 25 percentage stakes in krishna patnam port now this krishna patnam port is wholly owned subsidiary of adani ports because in october 2020 it had acquired 75 percentage stakes now it acquired remaining 25 percentage stakes so this is a port on the eastern coast and it is in andhra pradesh now apart from this acquisition one more acquisition was in news and recently byju acquired a e s l that is akash educational services limited and it acquired a e s l in 1 billion dollars 
Next question is FPI that is foreign portfolio investment inflows of how much amount has been registered by India in last fiscal. So it is 2.74 lakh crore. So India has witnessed a strong FPI inflow even in the COVID situation that shows that still there is a confidence of investors in Indian market. FPI is foreign investment in the stocks, bonds. Now FDI is foreign direct investment. FPI is foreign investment in stocks market. Now in this context, there is a committee Arvind Mayaram committee. Answer in comment box. What is the limit this committee suggested for the difference between FDI and FPI? Next question is who represented India in the consultation meeting of education ministers of E9 countries? So Mr. Sanjay Dhotri, the Union Minister of State for Education represented India in this meeting. Please note, I said Minister of State for Education. Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank is Education Minister and he is Minister of State. So usually this Minister of State is headed by Cabinet Minister. However, in certain cases, MOS that is Minister of State is given independent charge as well. Anyway, so what is this E9 initiative? E9 is a forum of nine countries, which are these nine countries. These are Bangladesh, Egypt, Mexico, Brazil, India, Nigeria, China, Indonesia and Pakistan. So it is an initiative related to education and this initiative was launched in 1993 and it was started to achieve the goals of UNESCO's education for all initiative. So since E9 initiative is in news, examiner may ask you that this education for all initiative is part of which international organization. So the theme of this recent E9 initiative meeting was scaling up digital learning to accelerate progress towards SDG number four, that is sustainable development goal number four. This E9 initiative was launched in 1993 as a part of this education for all summit and this summit held in our country. To be specific, it held in New Delhi. Next question is, under the integrated health information platform launched by health ministry, how many diseases can be tracked? So previously, it was tracking 18 disease. Now, it is capable of tracking 33 disease. Present health ministry is Dr. Harshwardhan. Recently, he launched this integrated health information platform. So it is a disease surveillance platform and India is first country to have such advanced disease surveillance program. Now recently, Dr. Harshwardhan was also in news as Dr. Harshwardhan and Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda launched Tribal Health Collaborative Anamai. So this will be supported by Piramal Foundation and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. What is the core objective of this initiative? Objective is Tribal Health by converging different initiatives by the government agencies and organizations. As per the tribunal's reform ordinance promulgated recently, the powers of appellate authorities are vested with which body? So, first thing first, the center promulgated tribunal reforms ordinance recently. So, as per the ordinance, the existing appellate authorities are replaced and their powers are vested in the high courts. Let me simplify it. See, tribunals are specialized courts. They, that means they will hear only specific type of cases. On the other hand, Courts will hear all type of cases. Tribunals are quasi-judicial body. Quasi means partially. Now, in order to challenge the decision of a tribunal, there is a appellate authority. Now, as per this recent ordinance, the appellate authorities are vested in the high court. That means after the judgment of tribunal, you can challenge that judgment in the high court. If we talk about ordinance powers, Article 123 contains the ordinance powers of president, and Article 213 contains the provisions for ordinance powers of governor. If we talk about tribunals, originally tribunals were not the part of constitution. It was incorporated in Indian constitution through 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act and it was in 1976. So now we have two important articles, 323A and 323B. This 323A is related to administrative tribunals. So you can keep it this way A to A. So A stands for administrative tribunals and B stands for all other tribunals. That means tribunals related to other matters. Please note that tribunals under Article 323A can be established only by the parliament. On the other hand, tribunals under Article 323B can be established 
both by parliament as well as by the state government depending on their legislative competence and the legislative competence is specified in the 7th schedule so in 7th schedule there are three list union list st state list and concurrent list next question is ministry of chemicals and fertilizers organized national dialogue on chemical manufacturing along with which organization so this organization is un ido what is ido it is united nations industrial development organization so as the name suggests it promote industrial development for the poverty eradication and for the environmental sustainability recently un ido was in news as it organized this national dialogue on chemical manufacturing as well as a dialogue under clean manufacturing in india as a part of swachh udyog udyog stands for industry so this un ido is united nations agency and the headquarters is in vienna vienna is in austria in fact vienna is the headquarters of opec what is opec it is organization of petroleum exporting countries usually it related term is also used and it is opec plus so answer in comment box what is the difference between opec and opec plus apart from that the headquarters of iaea that is international atomic energy agency is also in vienna in austria please answer in comment box whether iaea is an organization of united nations or not next question is the barakh nuclear power plant which was started recently is situated in which country so it is situated in the uae that is united arab emirates why it is so special because it is the first nuclear power station in arab world and this is located in abu dhabi recently it was in use because it start it started its commercial operations so this power plant has been built with the help of south korea so there are two korea one is north korea one is south korea capital of north korea is pyongyang capital of south korea is seoul recently south korea was also in use because of lg so lg is a company of south korea and recently lg announced that it is going to quit smartphone business recently north korea was in use as it decided not to participate in tokyo olympics tokyo is in japan and it is the host of this year's olympic games recently netra kumanan was in use in the context of olympics and she became the first indian woman sailor to qualify for the olympics apart from that recently indian army officer lieutenant colonel bharat pannu made guinness world record for fastest solo cycling now recently indian army was also in use because of military farms as indian army decided to close the military farms after 132 years of service so the decision was taken on 31st of march now usually these military farms was set up with an objective to provide hygienic cow milk to the troops and these were set up during the britishers time so the first military farm was formed in 1889 at allahabad and allahabad is in uttar pradesh next question is which institution announced that it favored adoption of global minimum tax on corporate profits so this was proposed by imf that is international monetary fund the chief economist of imf is geeta gopinath recently she was in news because imf has announced adoption of a global minimum tax on the corporate profits see because of the pandemic situation everyone suffered however because of this pandemic the rich become richer and the poor become poorer so imf has proposed solidarity tax on pandemic winners who are pandemic winners those companies which prospered during the pandemic situation so imf has proposed that a temporary solidarity tax should be imposed on such companies which earned more profit during the pandemic situation idea is to reduce social inequalities so this is going to be a temporary tax now this is on the lines of germany's solidarity tax actually a solidarity tax was imposed in germany after unification in 1991 so after the unification of east and western germany this tax was proposed recently imf was also in news as imf along with world bank launched climate change platform for poor countries imf was also in news because of its recent report and it is world economic outlook please note that world economic prospectus is released by world bank and world economic outlook is released by imf so recently this report was released and as per this report in 
Fiscal year 2022, India's growth projection is going to be 12.5 percent and therefore India is going to be the country with highest growth including both emerging and advanced economies. Next question is what is the theme of World Health Day 2021? So every year World Health Day is celebrated on 7th of April. Actually it is the anniversary of foundation of WHO in 1948. WHO is World Health Organization. So the theme for this year was building a fairer and healthier world. Apart from that, on 9th of April, CRPF Velo Day was celebrated. CRPF is Central Reserve Police Force. CRPF are under CAPF, that is Central Armed Police Force. That means CRPF are part of CAPF and CAPF are under the administrative control of MHA, that is Ministry of Home Affairs. Recently, Home Affairs Minister Amit Shah launched Ayushman CAPF scheme. In addition to that, 7th of April was also observed as International Day of Reflection on Genocide in Rwanda. Next question is, which country has hosted the meeting of BRICS Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors 2021? So, India recently hosted the meeting of BRICS Finance Ministers and Central Bank Governors. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. So, it is a grouping of five countries. and. There is a bank by these countries. It is New Development Bank. It is also known as BRICS Bank. Recently, Marcus Trojo was appointed as the president of this New Development Bank. Marcus Trojo is from Brazil. So, this meeting was co-chaired by Union Finance Minister Ms. Nirmala Sitaraman and RBI Governor Mr. Shaktikant Das. Now, recently, RBI was also in news because of GSEC. GSEC stands for Government Securities Acquisition Program. So, this is SAP. 1.0. Actually, this is GSAP 1.0. That is Government Securities Acquisition Program 1.0. So, as a part of this program, Central Bank, that is Reserve Bank of India, is going to purchase government bonds worth rupee one trillion. And the first purchase of rupee twenty five thousand crore is to be done on fifteenth of April twenty twenty one. RBI was also in news because of its amended or modified inflation forecast rate model. What is inflation? Inflation is price rise. So recently, RBI has revised its inflation forecast model. That means this model is used for the estimation of inflation in upcoming time period. So this model has been amended so that the monetary policy and fiscal policy work in coherence so that they can work in coordination with each other. Fiscal policy is policy by government and monetary policy is policy by Reserve Bank of India. That is central bank so in this new or in this amended fo inflation forecast model there are three major blocks one is fiscal block second is fuel block and third is balance of payment block next question is what was the target for number of houses in the first phase of pradhan mantri avas yojana gramin component so the target was 1 crore houses Recently, it was in use as under the scheme that is under Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Gramin component, 92% of the target has been completed. So the target of first phase was 1 crore and out of that 92% target is completed. Overall, the scheme aims to construct 2.95 crore houses by 2022. In 2022, India is going to complete 75 years of independence. So first thing first, this scheme was launched in 2016. To be specific, it was launched in April 2016. Objective is housing for all by 2022. So the minimum size of house under the scheme is 25 meters square. Previously, it was 20 meters square. Now the financial burden will be shared. So some component will be provided by central government. Some component will be provided by the state government. Now in case of plain areas, the distribution is 60-40. That is 60% will be provided by central government. Remaining 40% will be provided by the state government. In case of hilly areas, this is about plain areas. This is about hilly areas or northeast area. This contribution is 90-10. That is 90% will be provided by central government and remaining 10% will be provided by state government. And this scheme is under MORD. What is MORD? That is Ministry of Rural Development. Present MORD Minister is Narendra Singh Tomar. Recently, Mr. Tomar was in news as he launched Madhu Kranti Portal. So, Madhu is related to B. Kranti 
is revolution actually madhu is i think honey so it is an initiative of national bee board to enable traceability shows of honey and other beehive products now in the context of bee recently project rehab was in news what is rehab it stands for reducing elephant human attacks using bees so as the name suggest with the help of bees the human animal conflict is reduced so this is an initiative by kvic what is kvic it is khadi and village industries commission so it is under msme ministry so this project rehab was started in nagarhol national park of karnataka so how this entire thing works see this project use bee boxes as a boundary or as a fence so suppose this is the national park area and on the boundaries these bee boxes are used so like this these boxes are used now these bee create a buzz this buzz sound irritate elephants so because of this irritation they won't come out of these areas and that is how this will reduce the human and the and that is how this will reduce the human animal conflict these bee boxes are distributed as a part of honey mission and this honey mission is an initiative of kvic that is khadi and village industries commission this is part of msme ministry present msme ministry is nitin gadkari he also holds the portfolio of ministry of road transport and highways this nagarhol national park where this project was started is also known as rajiv gandhi national park so why this project was in news recently now this project will be implemented in other states as well to reduce the human elephant conflict next question is what amount of refinance assistance will be provided by Re reserve bank of india to all india financial institutions so this is 50000 crore it will be provided to the all india finance institutions such as nabard sidbi and nhb as a part of this initiative nabard is going to receive 25000 crore sidbi is going to receive 15000 crore and nhb is going to receive 10000 crore as refinance credit facility now recently rbi was also in news because of dsib that is domestic systemically important banks so three banks are given the status of dsib these are state bank of india sdfc and icici next question is what is iha2a which was in news recently so this iha2a stands for india h2 alliance so major players in the energy sector came together to form a new energy coalition it is india h2 alliance objective is to focus on the hydrogen technologies that's why h2 so that we can make our country a net zero carbon emitter so the objective of this alliance or this coalition and to focus on the hydrogen supply chain in our country next question is pli that is production linked incentives scheme for white goods has been approved recently what are the goods that are covered under this tag so recently union cabinet headed by prime minister approved the pli scheme for white goods as the name suggests pli that is production linked incentive is an incentive given for the production that means if you are going to produce more you will receive more incentive so recently the scheme was approved for white goods that is for air conditioners and led lights and it has been approved with a budget of 6238 crores objective is to make india competitive in the manufacturing of these specific products apart from that recently union cabinet approved national program on high efficiency solar pv modules and this is part of pli scheme pli stands for production linked incentive so the total outlay or total allocation for this is 4500 crores rupee so this will provide a focus to the manufacturing of solar photovoltaic that is pv modules and this will reduce our dependency on the imports sarthak which was in news recently is related to which policy so it is related to nep that is national education policy this nep was announced in 2020 what is the full form of sarthak it is students and teachers holistic advancement through quality education and recently this was released by union education minister ramesh pokhrel nishank so few important points first nep for its implementation we have sarthak it is for students and teachers nep was released in 2020 sarthak was released recently by education minister ramesh pokhrel nishank now recently education minister was also in news as he launched nano sniffer 
So this is an explosive detector. Explosive detector means it is going to detect explosives. And this is world's first microsensor based explosive trace detector. Recently, Education Minister launched this Nano Sniper. It is world's first microsensor based explosive trace detector. And this has been developed by Nano Sniff Technologies. Now, you might be thinking, why Education Minister launched this? This is something related to defense and security. This was launched by Education Minister because this Nano Sniff Technology is incubated startup of IIT Bombay. So, that is why Education Minister comes into picture. Now, apart from this, recently, Education Minister of Delhi was also in news and he is Manish Sisodia. So, why he was in news? Because recently, he launched Lab on Wheels program. And this is a program by DTU. What is DTU? It is Delhi Technological University. So, what is this Lab on Wheels? As a part of this program, DTU students will teach government school students and they will teach unprivileged children with the help of a special bus across Delhi. Next question is, with reference to astronomy, what is OSIRIS, which was in news recently? Which was in news recently. So, OSIRIS is an exoplanet. Officially, it is HD 209458. So, it was the first ever exoplanet that was spotted by the astronomers. What is exoplanet? See, exoplanet are those planets which orbit a star other than sun. These planets are known as exoplanet. That means outside the solar system. Exo means outside. So recently, this exoplanet Osiris was in use because as per a study published in Nature, it has been found that six chemicals are present in the atmosphere of Osiris. So that is why this entire issue was in use. Next question is, Blue Flag is globally recognized eco-label certification provided to beaches from which country? Actually, the question is that the organization which provides this blue flag is from which country? So, this blue flag certification is given by FWE, that is Foundation for Environmental Education. And this is an organization whose headquarter is in Denmark. So, why this concept of blue flag was in use? Actually, it was in use because our Odisha is trying to work to get blue flag certification for new beaches and the fishermen of Odisha are not happy with this. Why they are not happy? Because they demand that before giving status of blue flag to certain beaches, they should, that means these fishermen should be provided an alternative sea route to anchor their boats. See, in simplest term, when you provide a status of blue flag, certain activities are prohibited in those areas and you will have to maintain the standards on those beach. Now, the argument of these fishers is that if you are going to provide blue flag status, this will create a problem for them. So, before you provide status, please provide us alternative route so that we can anchor our boats. So, that is why this entire issue was in use. Now, Odisha is trying to provide the blue flag status to different beaches. These are Niladri Beach in Puri District, Gopalpur and Pati Sonpur in Ganjam District and Thalasari and Udaipur in Balasore district. So their argument is that if you are going to provide blue flag certificate or blue flag tag to these beaches, then the 500 meter land is developed. So where we are going to anchor our fishing boats. This is their argument. Now recently, Odisha was also in news because 1st of April was celebrated as Utkal Divas or Odisha Divas. Odisha was also in news because of Utkal Kesri. So Utkal Kesri is Dr. Hari Krishna Mehtab. Recently, Dr. Hari Krishna Mehtab was in news as Prime Minister Modi released Hindi translation of a book, Odisha Itihas. So, this Odisha Itihas is a book authored by Dr. H. Mehtab and recently Prime Minister inaugurated this book or Prime Minister released the Hindi translation of this book. Dr. H. Mehtab had served as the Chief Minister of Odisha from 1946 to 1950 and then from 1956 to 61. Recently, Odisha was also in news because of mask abhiyan to prevent the transmission of COVID-19. Now, in the context of COVID-19, recently Prime Minister Modi appealed the Chief Minister of States to organize Tika Utsav to celebrate the vaccination process. And this is to be organized from 11th of April to 14th of April. Now, objective is to vaccinate maximum people and 
to focus on zero wastage of COVID-19 vaccines. Recently, Prime Minister was also in news because of his book, Exam Warriors. Apart from this book, recently, few more books were in news. One is Manohar Parikar, Brilliant Mind, Simple Life. So this is a book authored by Nitin Gokhale. And second book is Names of Women. And this book is authored by Jeet Thail. So in one question, we have covered Odisha Itihas, we have covered Mask Abhiyan, we have covered Tika Utsav, Exam Warriors, a book on Manohar Parikar and a book named Names of Women and it is authored by Jeet Thai. Next question is a 100 crore fast petrol vessel named PS Joroster was handed over to which country by India? So this has been handed over to Seychelles. Recently it was handed over and Prime Minister of India participated in a virtual meeting with the President of Seychelles and he is Vavil Ramkalavan. So this is the fourth Indian made petrol boat which was gifted to Seychelles since 2005 and it has been built by GRSC that is Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers. The headquarters of this GRSC is in Kolkata. Now in a similar development recently INS Sarvekshak participated in a joint hydrographic survey in Mauritius. Apart from that INS Virat was also in use. Actually INS Virat has been decommissioned by Indian Navy. Now this has been bought by a private company and the name of company is Sri Ram Group. It is a private company based in Gujarat. Now in the context of Seychelles, recently a doctrine was in use. It is Sagar. What is Sagar? Sagar stands for security and growth for all in region. So this is our doctrine, our in the sense doctrine by India. Now Seychelles was also in use as it is the first African country to receive made in India COVID-19 vaccine. So Sagar is our doctrine for growth and prosperity in the Indian Ocean region. Now recently this Indian Ocean region was also in use as US Navy carried out freedom of navigation in India's EEZ. What is EEZ? It is exclusive economic zone. Now our argument is that USA Navy conducted this without our prior permission. So that is why it was controversial. The government has said that as per UN close, prior consent is mandatory. What is UN close? It is United Nations Convention on Laws of Sea. So this term is important freedom of navigation EEZ that is exclusive economic zone UNCLOS that is United Nations Convention on Laws of Sea. As per this convention, the prior consent is essential before any ship is allowed to pass through country's waters. So US Navy carried out the freedom of navigation operation in Indian waters in Indian Ocean region near Lakshadweep Islands. Now similarly, one more case was in news and it is a case of Enrica Lexi. So this is your homework. What is this entire case and why it was in news recently? It is a case related to Italian Marines. So please read about it. Next question is, when was the United Nations Trust Fund for Counterterrorism established? So this was established in 2009. So why it was in news recently? Because India has recently contributed additional 5 lakh US dollars to this United Nations Trust Fund for Counterterrorism. So with this our total contribution is 1.05 million US dollars. Now in the context of terrorism recently first meeting of India Maldives joint working group on counterterrorism was organized. So why it is so significant because it is the first meeting or first such meeting between India and Maldives. Apart from this one more anti-terrorist structure was in use and it is RATS. It is regional anti-terrorist structure. So it is associated to SCO. SCO is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Headquarters is in Beijing. Beijing is in China. The headquarters of RATS is in Tashkent. Tashkent is in Uzbekistan. Please note that eight countries are the members of SCO out of which four are India, China, Pakistan, Russia, and remaining four are Central Asian countries except Turkmenistan. Recently, China was also in use because of BASIC. What is BASIC? This is a grouping of four countries. These four countries are Brazil, South Africa, India, and China. So why this BASIC organization was in use? Because recently the 30th session of this BASIC was organized and from Indian side, our environment minister, Mr. Prakash Javadekar participated. Now, in the context of terror, there was one more organization, FATF, that is Financial Action Task Force. 
So it has twin objectives. One is to prevent terror financing and second is money laundering. Recently, FATF was in use as Pakistan has demanded more time to complete 27 point action plan so that it can get out of grey list of FATF. Right now, Pakistan is in grey list. So Pakistan was put under grey list of FATF for terror financing and for money laundering. Now answer in comment box, what is the formal name of this grey list? Recently, Pakistan was also in use as FIFA suspended Pakistan and Chad football federations for political interference by their respective governments. Next question is, as an acknowledgement of gender equality, which country replaced the term amen by aviators? So recently, Australia was in use because of this decision. Australian Air Force personnel will now be known as aviators rather than airmen. Why? Because Australia has the highest female participation in any branch of Australia's military in Royal Australian Air Force. In simplest term, previously, the personnel of Air Force of Australia were known as airmen. Now, this term is obviously not suitable for women Air Force personnel. So, now they have said that instead of airmen, we are going to use the term aviator since this is the gender neutral term. Now, Australia was also in news because of Quad. It was also in news because of Breton war crime report. So, this is a war crime report on the crimes committed by ADF, that is Australian Defence Forces in Afghanistan. Australia was also in news because of 2 plus 2 dialogue. So, 2 plus 2 dialogue is between the Defence Minister and Minister of External Affairs of India and their counterparts of Australia. Previously, this was of Secretariat level, but recently it was elevated to Ministerial level. Recently, MEA, that is Ministry of External Affairs, was also in news because of PDOT. What is PDOT? It is Pre-Departure Orientation Training Program. So, Ministry of External Affairs has launched this first online Pre-Departure Orientation Training Program for Migrant Workers. So, it aims to train the maximum number of prospective migrants before their departure. MEA was also in use because of Raisina Dialogue. So, Raisina Dialogue is organized by MEA in association with ORF. What is ORF? It is Observer Research Foundation. So, this time, that means this 2021 edition is going to be fully digital. Next question is, what is India's net direct tax collection excluding refunds for fiscal year 2021? So, it is 9.45 trillion. Now, the problem is that this is for the first time in last four years, the direct tax collection has fallen below 10 trillion mark, obviously because of coronavirus pandemic situation. However, please note that this year's actual tax collection is more than the revised estimates. Now, in the context of finance, recently one more event was in news. As per IMF, India's debt to GDP ratio increased from 74% to 90% during COVID-19 pandemic. Why? Because government borrowed more in order to create a stimulus or fiscal stimulus. Next question is the Central Mine Planning and Design Institute is a fully owned subsidiary of which PSU? So it is a subsidiary of CIL, that is Coal India Limited. The name of this company is Central Mine Planning and Design Institute. It is a Mineratna company and it is a subsidiary of Coal India Limited. Why it was in use? Because recently it got approval from Ministry of Civil Aviation to use drones to survey the coal fields. So now it can use drones. Recently BCCI also got approval to use drones for live recording of matches. BCCI is Cricket Control Authority of our country. Now, in the context of cricket, one more event was in news. It is related to Chandra Naidu. So, who was Chandra Naidu? She was India's first cricket commentator and she passed away recently. Apart from her, recently few other personalities passed away. Recently, Digvijay Singh Jala passed away. He was first Union Environment Minister and he was MLA from Wankaner in Gujarat. So, he was the first education minister of India under Prime Minister Indra Gandhi from 1982 to 1984. In addition to him, recently, UK's Prince Philip passed away and he was the husband of Queen Elizabeth II. Next question is, the three-banded rose finch declared as the 1340th bird's disease in India was spotted in which Indian state? So, it was spotted in Arunachal Pradesh. It has become the 1340th species of bird family in India. So you just need to remember the name and the state in which it was spotted. An ancient city named Aten 
which was in use recently has been discovered in which country so it was recently discovered in egypt and this is largest ancient city ever discovered the name of city is rise of aten now the capital of egypt is cairo recently egypt was also in news because of suez canal so this is the suez canal this is mediterranean sea and this suez canal was in news because of blockade which was caused by ever given now recently egypt was also in news because of its first female ship captain and the name is marwa al sail heather so she was in news because she was wrongly blamed for the suez canal blockade she is the first female ship captain of egypt next question is what is the name of global experiment which aims to measure the impact of reduction in ambient human sounds in ocean so the name of this experiment is iqoe that is international quiet ocean experiment it was started in 2011 to create a time series of measurements of ambient sound in different ocean locations so why this was in news because recently a team of scientists from this iqoe has started experiments to understand the impact of reduction in the human activity because of covid-19 lockdown so because of covid-19 there was a lockdown and this experiment is now trying to understand the impact of reduction in human activity because of this covid-19 lockdown next question is hccr portal which was recently launched by ayush ministry is associated with which field so this portal is associated with ccrh now what is ccrh it is central council for research in homeopathy so it is an apex research organization under ayush ministry why it was in news recently because it launched this hccr portal what is hccr it is homeopathic clinical case repository so this portal was recently launched on the occasion of world homeopathy day so this world homeopathy day was celebrated on 10th of april and on this occasion ccrh that is central council for research in homeopathy organized a conference and the theme of that conference was homeopathy a road map for integrative medicine so what is the objective of this hccr portal objective is to create a standard platform for homeopathic clinic researchers and medical students to enter the clinical cases now 10th of april was world homeopathy day on the other hand 11th of april was observed as world parkinson's day so what is parkinson's disease it is a nervous system disorder so this parkinson's day is observed to spread awareness about parkinson's disease and the disease is related to nervous system of human beings 11th of april is also celebrated as national safe motherhood day actually 11th of april also marks the birth anniversary of kasturba gandhi she was the wife of mahatma gandhi on the other hand 12th of april is observed as international day of human space flight so 12th of april was international day of human space flight apart from that recently prime minister announced that we should celebrate tikka utsav so this is related to vaccination for covid-19 and this is to be celebrated from 11th of april to 14th of april actually these two days are very significant because 11th of april marks the birth anniversary of jyotiba phule and 14th of april is the birth anniversary of dr b r ambedkar now in the context of covid-19 recently one more initiative was in use so the tikka utsav is related to the vaccination of covid-19 so recently one more covid-19 related initiative was in use and it is crushing the curve so this is an initiative started by kerala government to stop the transmission and to promote vaccination so this is a vaccination drive against covid-19 in addition to that recently punjab was in news as state government of punjab appointed bollywood actor sonu sood as a covid vaccination ambassador idea is to spread awareness about vaccination so that people do not hesitate to vaccinate themselves in addition to that recently government of india decided to impose ban on export of remdesivir and remdesivir api till the situation of covid-19 improves in our country this is a medicine which is used in cases of covid-19 next question is advanced antiquities management system which was in use recently 
is a system launched by which state or union territory. So this is a system related to Goa administration. Recently, Directorate of Archives and Archaeology of Goa inaugurated this advanced antiquities management system. So this is a first of its kind system in our country. So why this was launched? This was launched for the storage of antiquities. Now, in the context of archaeology, we have ASI. What is ASI? It is Archaeological Survey of India. So this is an organization associated with Culture Ministry. And present DZ, that is Director General of ASI is V. Vidyavati. Next question is, as per recent notification from Finance Ministry, a basic saving bank account can be opened in which institution? So this can be opened in post office. Recently, this was announced by the Finance Ministry. As per this recent notification, there is no minimum deposit requirement for opening a bank account in the post office. So there won't be any requirement for maintaining minimum balance. Now apart from that recently, RBI that is our central bank increased the bank balance limit for payment banks. So previously the limit was 1 lakh rupees. Now it has been increased to 2 lakhs. Apart from that recently, ATL payment bank was also in news. Why? Because it announced reward 123 saving bank account. Now recently RBI was in news because of DSIB status. DSIB stands for Domestic Systemically Important Banks. So three banks are given the status of DSIB. These three are SDFC, ICICI and State Bank of India. Recently, SDFC Bank was in news because of its Startup Grant 2021. So this is an initiative by SDFC Bank and with the help of this initiative, the bank provides support to the different startups. Recently, as a part of this initiative, it selected 21 startups. Now, to promote startups, we have an initiative. It is Startup India. And this initiative is by Commerce Ministry. On the other hand, we have Stand Up India. This initiative is by DFS, that is Department of Financial Services, and it is under Finance Ministry. Recently, Startup India was in use because the government has launched Startup Seed Fund. Next question is, which constitutional body has recently stated that all adults above 18 were free to choose a religion of their choice. So this was recently in news because of a verdict by Supreme Court. So Supreme Court recently held that the word propagate mentioned in the Indian constitution permits any one who is above 18 to freely choose a religion of his or her choice. Now in the context of constitution article 25 to 28 guarantees the right to freedom of religion. And Article 25 explicitly mentioned that all the persons are equally entitled to the freedom of conscience and they have right to profess, practice and propagate the religion. Now answer in comment box whether this Article 25 is applicable to the foreigners also. Means even foreigners do get this freedom as a part of this Article 25 or not. Now recently Supreme Court was also in news because of new CJI. That is new Chief Justice of India. So Justice N. V. Ramanna is going to be the new CJI. He is going to take charge on 24th of April. Apart from that, recently Supreme Court was also in news because of a new portal, and it is S U P A C E. It is driven by artificial intelligence. So what is S U P A C E? It is Supreme Court portal for assistance in courts efficiency. So this portal aims to provide assistance to the courts with the help of artificial intelligence. Next question is, which municipal corporation of India issued the first green bond in our country? So this was recently issued by the Ghaziabad Municipal Corporation and it is the first of its kind in our country. What are green bonds? Green bonds are the bonds where the proceeds or the money will be used for the green or environment friendly projects. So this Ghaziabad Municipal Corporation is a part of Uttar Pradesh. Recently, it issued green bonds and it raised a sum of 150 crore rupees with the help of these bonds. And this money will be used for creating water treatment infrastructure in the city. These bonds were listed in BSC. What is BSC? It is Bombay Stock Exchange. So Bombay Stock Exchange is the stock exchange in our country and it is located on Dalal Street in Mumbai. And it was established in 1875. It is the oldest stock exchange of Asia. Now in the context of 
Municipal bonds, which are also known as muni bonds. Recently, SEBI, that is Securities and Exchange Board of India, issued guidelines. So, the question is about municipal bonds. Who is the regulator? SEBI is the regulator, not the RBI. Please note this. Which is the first municipal corporation to issue municipal bonds? So, it is Bangalore or Bangalore Municipal Corporation. It was the first one to issue such municipal bonds in 1997. So, recently, SEBI issued guidelines or eligibility criteria to issue the municipal bonds. First criteria is that the municipalities which are issuing such bonds must not have negative net worth in each of the three previous years. Second such criteria is that they must not have defaulted the repayment. And third criteria is that the municipality, the promoters and directors must not be enlisted in the willful defaulters list which is published by Reserve Bank of India. And who are willful defaulters? Willful defaulters are those people who have the capability to repay their loans but who are not willing to repay. For example, Vijay Malia. So, he do have the capability but he is not willing to pay. Next question is, which body collaborated with Hindustan Unilever and Google for conducting artificial intelligence for agriculture hackathon? So, this is done by MyGOV India. So, these three entities that is Hindustan Unilever, Google and MyGOV India collaborated for a hackathon in the field of agriculture. Idea is to provide a platform to find innovative solutions for the water conservation in the field of agriculture and to bring startups in the field of agriculture. Now this AI stands for artificial intelligence. Recently that means last year RAISE summit was organized for artificial intelligence. What is RAISE? It is responsible AI, the responsible artificial intelligence for social empowerment. So this RAISE summit was hosted by MEITY, that is Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Next question is, which institution is set to launch a handbook for online dispute resolution? So this is being done by Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog is an executive body. Recently it was in news as it has planned to launch a handbook for online dispute resolution. Now, in the context of trade-related disputes, recently Singapore Convention was in use. So, Singapore Convention is also known as UNISC, that is United Nations Convention on International Settlement Agreements. Answer in comment box whether India is a party to this convention or not. Now, Niti Aayog stands for National Institution for Transforming India. Recently, Singapore was in use because it became the first country to ratify RCEP. So what is RCEP? It is Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. So recently Singapore became the first country to ratify this RCEP. Please note that India already decided to quit this RCEP trade agreement. This RCEP must be ratified by at least six ASEAN countries. ASEAN is Association of South Asian Countries and this is a gr grouping of 10 countries. So out of 10, at least six must ratify RCEP along with three known ASEAN countries should ratify it, then only this RCEP will come in force. Recently, Singapore was also in news as the scientists from Singapore have developed a technology to interact with plants. And this has been given the name RoboPlants. So scientists have used the technology to trigger a Venus flytrap plant. And this Venus flytrap plant is a carnivorous plant. Apart from this RCEP, one more trade agreement was in news and it is CPTPP. What is CPTPP? Actually, previously it was TPP, that is Trans-Pacific Partnership. Later, USA decided to quit this and later it became CPTPP. It stands for Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership. So recently, UK decided to join the CPTPP. Recently, UK was also in news because UK-based Kane Energy has decided to file lawsuits against India as a part of $1.2 billion award by International Arbitration Tribunal. So this is your homework. Why Kane Energy has filed lawsuit against government of India? And what is this entire issue? Which country has launched a hotline to report online defamatory comments done by historical nihilist? So first thing first, this is done by CCP, that is Chinese Communist Party. So anyone who do not agree with CCP or who do not agree with the views of CCP 
He is considered as historical nihilism, that means who do not agree with the actions of CCP in the past or their description of past events. Now, China has launched a separate hotline to report such online comments which tend to defend the ruling government party, that is Chinese Communist Party. Please note that this year, CCP is celebrating 100th anniversary. Recently, China was also in news because of Ganbala radar station. So, China opened its 5G signal base at world's highest radar station. And this is Ganbala radar station. Next question is, which movie won the British Academy of Film and Television Arts Best Picture Award? So, Nomadland won the Best Picture Award at BAFTA Awards. BAFTA stands for British Academy of Film and Television Arts. And Kloj Hao, a Chinese filmmaker, became the second woman and became the first woman of color to win the BAFTA Award for Best Director for the movie Nomadland. The Best Actor Award was given to Anthony Hopkins and Best Actress Award was given to Frances McDormand. Next question is, what is the original name of Antarctica's Doomsday Glacier which was in news recently. So the original name is Thwaites Glacier. It is in Antarctica and it is also known as Doomsday Glacier. So as you can see this is the geographical location of this glacier. This is Antarctica, this is South Pole. So why it was in news? Because as per the researchers this glacier is melting at a very higher rate than it was originally thought. And this glacier is so large that it contains enough water to raise the world sea level by more than half a meter. Next question is with reference to the process of vaccination, what is the full form of AEFI? So AEFI stands for adverse events following immunization. That means these are the events that may occur after immunization. Now in the context of COVID vaccination, recently this term was in use AEFI that is adverse events following immunization. Apart from that recently, Subject Expert Committee recommended the emergency use of Sputnik vaccine. This is a vaccine by Russia. Now DCGA, that is Drug Controller General of India, is going to consider this recommendation. DCGA is under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The other two vaccines which are already approved are Covishield and Covaxin. Recently, Sonu Sood was appointed as the vaccine ambassador by Punjab government. Recently, Punjab was in news because of Jallianwala Bagh massacre. So, this is also known as Amritsar massacre and it is in news because this event or this massacre happened on 13th of April in 1919. So, this year we commemorated 102nd anniversary of this massacre. Recently, Punjab was also in news as Punjab government announced that they will pay MSP, that is minimum support price, directly to the farmers. As of now, MSP is provided to the farmers through Adhatis. These are known as commission agents. Next question is Commerce and Industry Minister launched Trade Facilitation Mobile App of which office? So this is an app of DZFT. What is DZFT? It is Directorate General of Foreign Trade and DZFT is under Commerce Ministry. So this app will provide artificial intelligence based assistance in all the services of DZFT. Recently, Commerce Mr. Pius Goel was also in news as he launched eSanta app or eSanta platform for marine products. Now with the help of this platform, the farmers can sell their produce on this portal. Now for the promotion of marine products, we have MPEDA that is Marine Products Export Development Authority and this is under Commerce Ministry. Now MPEDA have one center and it is National Center for Aquaculture. Recently, Commerce Ministry was also in news as it notified rules for copyright. Please note that copyright regime in our country is governed by two regulations. One is Copyright Act of 1957 and second is Copyright Act of 2013. Next question is what is the name of movement to be launched by the Health Minister to emphasis on nutritionally balanced diet. So the name of this movement is Aha Kranti. Objective is to provide information about nutritionally balanced diet. Mission of this motto is good diet, good cognition. So this program will train teachers 
and then these teachers will teach the students and their families the significance of balanced nutritional diet now in the context of nutrition government already launched portion abhiyan and september month is celebrated as portion ma apart from that recently 16th of march to 31st of march was celebrated as portion pakwada now in the context of nutrition we have national council on nutrition ansel in comment box who is the chairperson of this council now when i ask some question so as a viewer it is your responsibility to answer that it is going to help you you will be able to recall it or remember it for a longer period of time but nowadays students need everything ready made so if a question is asked they will scroll in the comment section and then they will see and take a screenshot this is similar to those person who think that if i will go to the gym and if i will see a fit person i will be fit also so good luck and he is coming to the main point so for elderly person recently government launched a different initiative it is portion abhiyan for elderly person and it has been launched by ministry of social justice and empowerment now in the context of nutrition recently a report was in news it is global food policy research global food policy report so this report is published by international food policy research institute and the theme of this year's report is transforming food systems after covid-19 next question is which international body has given note to imf that is international monetary fund for issue of fresh sdr sdr stands for special drawing rights so this has been done by g20 g20 is a group of advanced economies recently finance ministry of g20 members have given their approval to imf for issuing of fresh sdr amounting to 650 billion dollars to g20 member countries please note that sdr is neither a currency nor a claim on imf the value of sdr is decided on the basis of basket of currencies and this basket of currencies include dollar of usa euro japanese yen pound sterling and chinese renminbi so why this approval for fresh sdr was given this was given because in corona situation all the low income countries are facing financial crisis so this new decision will help to boost the reserve of all countries and therefore it is going to benefit especially the low income countries so that they do not feel distressed because of this pandemic situation next question is as per recent data the population of which species has doubled in chilka lake so it is a population of dolphins chilka lake is in the state of odisha and this chilka lake is the india's largest brackish water lagoon it is known for eravadi dolphins now recently one dolphin sanctuary was in news and it is vikram sila ganga dolphin sanctuary it is in state of bihar next question is artemis program is undertaken by which organization so it is related to nasa it is nasa's manned mission to the moon that means nasa is going to send its human beings to moon and it will land the first person of color on moon and the first woman on the moon as a part of mission in 2024 recently nasa was also in news because of odyssey so odyssey is a mission of nasa for mars recently it was in news because it completed 20 years so it was launched in 2001 and this odyssey mission detected large amount of hydrogen on mars nasa is a space agency of usc recently nasa was also in news because of uae space program so uae is united arab emirates recently it announced first female astronaut so the name of first female astronaut is nora al matroshi so she is the first female astronaut of uae apart from that one more astronaut was announced by uae and his name is mohammad al molla so these two astronauts of uae will get special space training at the johnson center of nasa and this johnson space center is in houston recently uae was also in news because indian business tycoon yusuf ali ma got the top civilian award in uae recently one more space recently one more space initiative was in news and it is 
a space initiated by SpaceX. SpaceX is a private company headed by Elon Musk. So recently SpaceX announced four member crew for the world's first all civilian Earth orbiter mission. And the name of this mission is Inspiration 4. Next question is what is the overall capex that is capital expenditure by 37 large central public sector enterprises and government departments for fiscal year 2021. So it is 4.6 lakh crore. This was the combined capital expenditure by 37 large central public sector enterprises and department and undertakings. The capital expenditure target was 5 lakh crore. Now among these entities, NHAI that is National Highway Authority of India was the largest investor with capex. See first thing first what is capital expenditure? So if you spent money for the acquisition of say assets that means if your money is used for long term purpose then it is capital expenditure. On the other hand if you are using money for day to day operations then it is revenue expenditure. Revenue expenditure are short term expenses and they are recurring in nature generally. Recurring means they occur on regular intervals. So coming back to the original point NHAI is the largest investor and for the first time it has overtaken Indian Railways. So this is important point because for the first time in terms of capital expenditure NHAI has overtaken Indian Railways. NHAI is National Highway Authority of India. It is under Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. So capex of NHAI was 1.25 lakh crore. The capex of Indian Railways was 1.24 lakh crore. IOC that is Indian Oil Corporation was on third position. Its capex was 30,000 crores. Next question is which institute has launched the Little Guru app? So recently ICCR that is Indian Council for Cultural Relations celebrated its 71st foundation day and at the celebrations in Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Indian Embassy in Beijing the Little Guru app was also launched. This is the world's first gamified Sanskrit learning app. Answer in comment box whether Sanskrit is a part of language mentioned in the 8th schedule or not. ICCR was founded in 1950 and it was founded by Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. He was the first education minister of independent India. Swami Vivekananda represented India and represented Hinduism at the parliament of world's religion and this was the first such event it held in 1893. This was the first world's parliament of religion. It held in 1893 and it held in Chicago. Please note that the Perth University of Swami Vivekanand is on 12th of January and in our country it is celebrated as National Youth Day. Chicago is in USA. Recently USA was in news because of JCPOA that is Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. It is also known as Iran Nuclear Deal. Recently Iran was in news because of uranium enrichment. First thing first why USA was in news because of JCPOA? Because during the regime of Donald Trump, USA decided to quit this JCPOA. This deal was signed to prevent Iran from making nuclear weapons. Now USA is out of this agreement and USA has reimposed sanctions on Iran. So now to pressurize other members, Iran has started working on nuclear weapons or Iran has restarted working on nuclear weapons and that is why recently Natanj nuclear facility in Iran was in use because of uranium enrichment. This nuclear facility was also in use as recently Iran blamed Israel for attack on this nuclear facility. Recently Iran was also in use because of its 25 years agreement with China. Recently China was in use because of Uyghurs. These are the Muslim minority in China. Recently Japan announced that it may join Five Eyes Alliance to restrict China's actions against Uyghur Muslims. Five Eyes Alliance is a grouping of intelligence sharing and it is a grouping of five countries. These five countries are Australia and New Zealand, UK, US and Canada. Recently Japan was also in news because of Fukushima nuclear power plant. Actually this nuclear power plant was in news recently. So what is this entire story? See in 2011 this nuclear power plant was devastated because of earthquake and tsunami. Now Japanese government has approved a plan and as per the plan the radioactive water 
from this nuclear power plant will be treated and then it will be released in ocean. So that is why a lot of activists are opposing this decision of Japanese government. They are saying that this radioactive water even after treatment may have harmful ramifications on the ocean water. So that is why this Fukushima nuclear power plant was in use. It is in Japan. India has extended the ceasefire agreement with the three insurgent groups of which state for one more year. So these are the insurgents of Nagaland and government to be specific MHA that is Ministry of Home Affairs extended ceasefire agreement with NSCN and its three branches till April 2022. See these three that is NSCN, NK, R and K. These are the insurgents groups in Nagaland. What is their demand? Their demand is sovereign Naga state and it is given the name Nagalim. So they want that there should be a sovereign Naga state which would consist of all the areas which are inhabited by Naga people in the northeast of India and in the northwest of Myanmar. So as you can see in the map, this is Arunachal Pradesh, this is Nagaland, this is Manipur and Mizoram, this is Tripura, Meghalaya and Assam and this is Sikkim. Now recently, the state of Meghalaya was in use because of Amparin Leongdo Committee. Recently, this committee has submitted a report and as per this committee, three out of every thousand pregnant women in Meghalaya are tested HIV positive. So this is very very serious issue and the number of cases in the state of Meghalaya, number of HIV positive cases in the state of Meghalaya are increasing alarmingly. Please note that in March 2021, Meghalaya had launched health policy and this new health policy which was introduced in March 2021 does include AIDS but it does not prioritize the issue. So you can see it is such a big issue that 3 out of every 1000 pregnant women are tested HIV positive. Apart from that, the state of Manipur was in news because of Sajibu Cheroba. So this is the Lunar New Year festival which is celebrated in the state of Manipur. It is celebrated by the people who follow the religion of Sanmahism and these people are in Manipur. Next question is Heidki Matsuyama is the first Japanese player to claim a major championship in which sports. So he is the first Japanese player to claim a major championship in golf. Recently Japan was also in news because of few other events. Japan is the host of Tokyo Olympic Games. Japan was also in news because of 2 plus 2 dialogue. It was also in news because of quad. Quad is quadrilateral security dialogue. It was in news because of Malabar exercise. It was also in news as it showed its willingness to join Five Eyes Alliance. So this 2 plus 2 dialogue is with Australia, Japan and USA. Recently Australia was in news because of tropical cyclone Seroza. So this tropical cyclone Seroza hit the Western Australia. Five Eyes Alliance is an intelligence sharing alliance of five countries. These five countries are US, Canada, UK, Australia and New Zealand. Recently New Zealand was in news as it became the first country in the world to introduce a climate change law for financial sector. Recently New Zealand was also in news because of New Zealand cricketer Kane Williamson. So why he was in news because he was awarded Sir Richard Hadley medal. Now coming back to this climate change law for the financial sector. So this law requires the financial firms to explain how they are going to manage the climate related risk and opportunities. Next question is the day on which the Indian Army launched Operation Meghdoot is observed as which special day. So this Operation Meghdoot was launched by Indian Army. It was launched on 13th of April in 1984. Name is Operation Meghdoot and it is commemorated every year as Siachin Day. So this was the operation which was conducted by Indian Army to secure Siachin Glacier. It is the world's highest and coldest battlefield. So this was celebrated on 13th of April. On the other hand, 14th of April was celebrated as the birth anniversary of Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. This is also known as Bhim Jayanti. Dr. Ambedkar was given the Bharat Ratra award in 1990. He was given this award posthumously. On the other hand, 14th of April was also observed as World Chagas Disease Day. 
13th of April was also observed as International Turban Day. 13th of April is also important because on this day in 1919, Jaliawala Bagh Massacre event happened. So this time we observed the 102nd anniversary of Jaliawala Bagh Massacre. Answer in comment box which event was termed as Himalayan blunder by Gandhiji. Next question is which institution launched Potion Gyan, a national digital repository on health and nutrition. So this has been done by Niti Aayog in partnership with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Asoka University. Name of initiative is Potion Gyan. Potion stands for nutrition, Gyan stands for knowledge. So it is related to the knowledge of nutrition. Niti Aayog is an executive body. Niti stands for National Institution for Transforming India. So this Potion Gyan is a national digital repository on health and nutrition. It is a digital database. Now in the context of nutrition recently, Union Health Minister launched Ahar Kranti to spread awareness about nutrition. Apart from that recently, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment had launched Portion Abhyan for elderly people. The objective is to provide nutritional support to the elderly people. The month of September is observed as the Portion Ma to spread awareness about nutrition. Now, for elderly people recently, Principal Scientific Advisor to Government K. Vijay Raghun launched Manas app to promote the well-being across different age groups with a special emphasis on elderly people. So what is the full form of Manas? Manas stands for Mental Health and Normalcy Augmentation System. Now recently Niti Aayog was also in news because it launched the second version or 2.0 version of India Energy Dashboards. So this dashboard has been launched to achieve the development goals that is to achieve the sustainable development goals and to focus on India's INDC that is intended nationally determined contribution. So these are related to Paris Agreement. Apart from that Niti Ayo was also in news as along with Atal Innovation Mission it has signed an agreement with Daso Systems to work towards providing a digitally rich ecosystem of innovation. That means to promote innovation. Now, in the context of INDC, recently a committee was in use and it is Apex Committee for Implementation of Paris Agreement. Answer in comment box, who is the chairperson of this committee? I know on regular basis I keep on saying but hardly 30-40 people are going to answer it. This itself shows the level of seriousness. See, those people who clear exam, they are not extraordinary. They are just consistent. They are just honest towards themselves. They don't fool themselves that we are studying and they are just watching YouTube videos. This is a new trend I have noticed. People spend more than 50% of their study time watching lectures on YouTube without any pen or paper or without any active participation and then they think why they are not able to clear. Nothing can replace self-study. I know on YouTube you will see n number of videos. In fact YouTube is flooded with such content that watch these videos and get show short selection or and watch these videos to get this much marks. That's good for business because those are catchy thumbnail and most of the people click them and watch them. But trust me there is no shortcut. Yeah you will understand it after wasting your attempts after wasting your parents money. <laughs> Anyways enough of gang. Next question is the National Highway Authority of India is to deploy NSV to provide better roads. What does NSV stand for? So NSV stand for Network Survey Vehicle. So in order to provide better quality of roads, NHAI is set to deploy NSV. NHAI is National Highway Authority of India. It is under Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. So NHAI has made road condition survey using NSV mandatory at the time of certifying the completion of project and every six months thereafter. So for the first time once the project is completed after that in order to check the completion a survey is conducted. So for that NSV is mandatory now and it will be conducted after every six months in order to ensure the quality of roads. Now in the context of road infrastructure recently one more event was in use as environment minister Mr. Prakash Javadekar announced that one crore plants has been geotagged along with national highways. 
NHI was also in news as it was the top entity in terms of capex that is capital expenditure. We had already discussed this issue in our last lecture. Now in this context recently one more public sector enterprise was in news it is EDCIL. So why it was in news because it has paid its highest ever dividend. Answer in comment box it is under which union ministry. Next question is what is the name of farthest gamma ray emitting galaxy that has been discovered recently. So the name of this galaxy is narrow line Seyfert. It is the name of galaxy. Recently it was discovered and it is the farthest gamma ray emitting galaxy that has been discovered so far. It is about 31 billion light years away from the earth. Our galaxy is Milky Way. Light year is a unit of length. Please remember this. For space objects, we use light years to specify their distance. Next question is by what percentage the net indirect tax collection in 2021 has grown over the previous year. So it is 12.3 percentage. The tax collection was 10.71 lakh and the target was 9.89 lakh. So this indirect tax collection included GST, customs and excise duties. Net collection from GST was 5.48 lakh crore during 2020-21. Please note that. Please note that this is 8% drop as compared to previous year. So you just need to remember the trends. In case of GST, the collection declined as compared to previous year. However, in case of indirect tax, total indirect tax collection, GST is a part of this indirect tax collection. This collection increased and the growth is approximately 12 percentage. That is custom tax collection witnessed a growth of 21 percentage. Next question is Central Asia Center for Trade and Economic Cooperation is being constructed by which countries? So this is being constructed by the two Central Asian countries. One is Uzbekistan, another is Kazakhstan. So this will provide more business opportunities and this will serve as a large industrial trade and logistic platform for these two countries. Now please note that these two countries that is Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan are the part of SCO. SCO is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So four Central Asian countries are the member of SCO except Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan is fifth Central Asian country. So Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan or Tajikistan are the members of SCO. Remaining four members are Russia, China, India and Pakistan. India and Pakistan became the full-fledged member of SCO after Astana summit in 2017. Headquarters of SCO is in Beijing and SCO have one RATS organization. It is regional anti-terrorist structure. Next question is who has been appointed as the chief election commissioner? So he is Mr. Sushil Chandra. He is going to succeed Mr. Sunil Aroda who retired. Who retired recently. Now apart from him recently few other personalities were in news. One is Duti Chand. So she was in news because she was selected for Chhattisgarh Virni Award. In addition to her, recently Siddharth Singh Longjam has been appointed as the next DZ that is Director General of NADA. What is NADA? It is National Anti-Doping Agency. Apart from him, Adil Janulbhai, the chairperson of QCI that is Quality Council of India has been appointed as the chairperson of Capacity Building Commission. This Capacity Building Commission has been established under a national program for Civil Services Capacity Building. This is also known as Mission Karam Yogi. In addition to him, recently Alfred Aho was in news because of AM Turing Award. So this AM Turing Award is considered as the Nobel Prize of Computing. So along with him, the award was given to Jeffrey David Ullman. Apart from him, recently Josha Osmani was in news as Josha Osmani has been selected as the president by the parliament of Kosovo. In addition to that, Guillermo Loso has been selected as the new president of Ecuador. So these were the most important questions. Now get ready for the test. Please make sure you attempt the test without pausing the timer.
Thank you and that's all for the day.